Shiva Ram, Atutu, wife of the hunter Kunak, moves slowly today, for she carries the burden of an unborn child. Her younger daughter, the lame girl Amuk, is quick to help. She knows that soon there will be a tiny new face in their igloo. The elder daughter, Kauna, helps her mother too. Kauna is 15 and soon to be married. From her mother, she has learned how to tend the seal oil lamp, how to cook and how to sew. Everything she must know to be a good wife and mother. Her young hands are a help at a time like this, when her mother moves so slowly. Kauna will be a good wife. She has learned well from her mother, just as Atutu learned from her mother, who now shares their igloo. Oopik is old, a widow depending on her daughter's husband for food and shelter. But she is the authority in the igloo. Hers is the authority of experience, the wisdom of age. Atutu's husband Kunak has been out hunting for caribou. Kunak is a good man, a fine hunter and trapper. But sometimes he is sad. He has no son. He awaits the coming of the next child with impatience, for to have sons is dear to the heart of every Eskimo. A son will be the most important member of the family when he grows up, a hunter and provider. Girls are treated with kindness, but the boy in the family will always be the favorite. Sisters are rarely jealous of this. Kauna and Amuk look forward to having a new face in the igloo, someone to play with and help look after, and if a brother, to boast about. Always this has been so. In the Eskimo family, everyone has a role to play. The wife and mother, the hunter and provider, the little helpers learning how to live through the experience of their elders. day, the first sharp warning. The time has come. The neighbor women are ready. They have been expecting this call. They leave Amok and Kana, for by old custom, unmarried girls do not return to the family igloo until after the child is born. When both Amok and Kana were born, Atutu was all alone and she knew fear. But now as she kneels on the sleeping platform and the caribou skins are wrapped around, she is not afraid. Her friends are with her. One of them has brought her baby, too young to be affected by this mystery. Oopik will look after the little fellow. The other women will do what has to be done. One puts water on to boil, for when it is over, they'll all want a cup of tea.
it is over, and all their hopes have been fulfilled. Atutu has given her husband a son. That night, everyone in the camp gathers in the igloo. Everyone, that is, but Kunuk himself. He has been conveniently absent on a seal hunt. All the women share the happiness of Atutu, her pride in her little son. The girls giggle with excitement, happy at last that they have a baby brother. The old women gossip and boast a little about their children and their children's children. Someone is coming. It must be Kunuk back from his hunt. He's a sly one. Stays away until he's sure everything is over. Then he's so surprised that anything has happened while he's been away. This is a proud moment. His son must have a name, and that is for grandmother to decide. Angoti will be his name, she says. Angoti was his grandfather's name, a good man whose virtues now live in this tiny body. And Kunak is no longer sad. He has a son. His son will grow. He will be a mighty hunter, the mightiest this land has ever seen. Eight months have passed. Little Angoti has grown fat and chubby as a baby seal. He has no need of clothes, for only rarely is he away from his mother. The cold in the igloo does not bother him. Today is a big day. His mother is going to take him on his first long trip. He is carried inside the caribou skin clothes, right next to his mother's warm body. This calls for a certain amount of gentle juggling to which Agoti has become accustomed by now. Atutu's clothes have a pouch specially made to carry the baby. The long hood is a separate part. Caribou skin soaker is put in the pouch just in case. But usually Angoti will let his mother know his intentions by squirming. Then she can get him out in time. A cord hooked in front and passed beneath the pouch keeps him in place. He likes it there. It's warm and dark. Grandmother will not go on this trip. Three sleeps to the place where the white man has built his houses. On the afternoon of the fourth day, the family reached the end of their journey, the place where the missionary lives and the policeman and the trader. A great settlement this, growing year by year. Kana and Amuk are very curious about a big new house that is being built. It is called a school where the Eskimo children can learn to read and write, just like the children in the land of the white man. A strange place for shy little girls. skins can be sold and white man's goods bought. And in exchange for a piece of paper, Kunak and Atutu get the free food for their children. The trader helps them choose what they need. The special food for little Angoti. He says this food will help the little one grow up big and strong. Kunak thinks this is good. He tells the trader that he can remember a time when this was not so. 
And sometimes a mother would have no food for her baby. Atutu says Kunak is such a rascal, always wanting a share, saying he didn't get it when he was a baby. She has a time keeping it for Angoti, but she will do her best. That winter, the family remains at the same camp because hunting is good and the meat caches are full. Atutu is glad they do not have to move, but their igloo is getting dirty. The igloo gets cold and damp when the ice forms and Kunak must chop it away. He will soon have to build a new igloo next door. But he is never so busy that he can't find time to play with his little son. Household, master of the igloo. Angoti has now passed his first birthday. Everyone agrees that grandmother named him well, for Angoti means little man. Angoti is very fond of the special food from the store. There is usually none left for his father. But grandmother doesn't think much of the stuff. There was none of this when she was a girl. Besides white man's food, Ango Tea gets meat from the pot, the tenderest pieces of the boiled caribou. thinks this is much better. But was she not raised this way? But for a long time, most of his food comes from his mother, until he is four or five years old, or until another baby comes along. Winter has come. Angoti is two years old. He is able to walk now, and his mother has made his first clothes of soft, warm caribou skins, which have been scraped clean and smooth. A great deal of loving care has gone into them. The tiny boots of caribou skin, worn over socks of caribou skin, keep his feet warm and dry. He has two suits. The first is worn with fur on the inside. He likes to feel the smoothness of the fur on his skin. His outer suit has the fur on the outside, as do the tiny mitts. He'll always be losing them, always asking his mother for more. Now Angoti is dressed as warmly as his father. But as he is still a little boy, there is a difference in design. Closed when he stands, open when he stoops. Now Angoti is ready for anything. Four winters have gone by, and a fifth has come with its welcome snow. At seven, the pattern of Angoti's life is forming. Even his play has a purpose. He builds a little igloo now so that he will know how to build a big one when he is a man. His father has taught him how to cut the blocks of hard snow with a big knife, how to put them together to make a home. Woof, <laughs> woof, 
Like all boys, he longs for the day when he will have his own dog team. One like that of his father, with big, strong huskies to pull the sled over the snow. The team of Anguity, the great hunter. With the other boys at camp, he plays dog. With old harness and trace, they take turns at pulling the small sled and imitating the dog's every action. always good to get back home after a hard day outside. Home to the warmth and comfort of the igloo. Angoti has no regular hours for eating or sleeping. He comes and goes as he pleases. He is still the ruler of this household. He can get away with anything. Almost. Mother says no. An Eskimo mother striking her own son? A white man's idea which Atutu must have picked up at the settlement. In the old days, Atutu would not have dreamed of disobeying her mother's wishes. Times and customs are changing, but not little boys. Angoti likes the sympathy of his grandmother. His mother knows that he will soon forget. It's a good thing Angoti's future wife cannot see him crying. Her name is Shikitna. Her parents are old friends of Kunak, who spoke for on behalf of Angoti when she was born. In the igloo of her people, she must learn the tasks of women and be able to do them well if she is to be a good wife and mother. She will learn how to scrape the caribou skins for clothing to make them soft and smooth. She will learn to chew the seal skin to make it soft so that it can be sewn into boots and mitts. Most important of all, she will learn to sew well, for an Eskimo wife must be prepared to make all the clothes for her family. Tenth winter since the year of his birth, Angoti's first great sorrow, the death of his gentle mother, gone from him on the long journey in the long night. For a while he is disconsolate. does not last long in this land. The earth is reborn with the winds of spring. The shackles of ice turn to water and the streams go dancing down to the sea. Winter dies and out of its death a new season emerges to replace it in unchanging pattern. The land is reborn only to die. Although death is mysterious, no Eskimo fears death. It is but the gateway to a new and better life, far removed from his life on Earth.
immersed in the reality of the world around him, Hango T soon forgets. What is done is done. It had to be. <laughs> Twelve winters have passed since Angoti was born. He has changed over the years. No longer a boy, not quite a man. From the older men, he hears tales of the hunt. For the Eskimo loves to tell tales. Stories that grow with each telling. Sometimes they are made into songs. Great is the art of the man who tells the tale. And the events of long ago live again here in the igloo of Kunak. Kunak has changed with the years, and he has a new wife. In this land, a man must have someone to cook the food and make the clothes. The storyteller speaks of a great walrus hunt, and Angoti is enthralled by the impassively told tale. His arm grips the harpoon, raises it high, then plunges it down into the arching back of the huge walrus. His arm is strong. His aim is true. done. A story of skill and courage. Angoti boasts that he too will be a great hunter. But first he must be taught his trade. On the trap line he watches his father set a trap for the white fox. Small hollow in the snow. Cover trap with snow block. Trim the block so that only a thin covering hides it from view. His father shows him how it is done. Now he can try his hand. More yet. Careful. Too bad. But Kunak is patient. They will try again. The skin of the white fox is the only staple article of trade in this land. If Angoti is to be a good trapper, he must learn his lesson well. At the edge of the sea ice, Kunak takes Angoti to hunt the seal. Angoti has been hunting before, but he has yet to get a seal. It is a cold job, watching, waiting. Some days the seal will come, some days no. All you can do is watch and wait. Angoti's first seal. It is hard to tell who is the proudest, Kunak or his son. Brought in to the edge of the ice by the wind, the kill is dragged to safety. A fine one with a good skin. Today, Angoti has entered the company of men. In the dawn of the 18th year since the day of his birth, Angoti, the man, takes Shikitna as his wife. In this land, a man must marry. In this land, no man can live alone. <laughs> Ego conion govos in matrimonium. 
in nomine Patris et de Filii et de Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Benedicat Domine annulum hunc, quam nos tuo in nomine benedicimus, ut queum gestaverit fidelitatem integram, suo sponso tenant, in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. And so the girl whose future has been linked with his since the day of her birth is now the wife of Angoti. From now on, their destinies are one. But two years pass before Angoti leaves the igloo of his father. Now he wants to become his own master, to go away and establish his igloo in another place. Kunak has given his consent. It is a good year, and Angoti is a good man. His life will depend on his ability as a hunter and trapper. Not only his life, but that of his wife and another. Angoti did not have to wait as long as Kunak for a son. has learned his trade. The goodwill and natural charity instilled in him by his parents will remain with him all his life. Together, this family will live and multiply, sharing their meager possessions in time of plenty and of want, facing their hard life together with energy and good humor and a boundless confidence in themselves and their land.